Welcome to Habib Talks, an initiative by Habib University which is dedicated to cultivating meaningful conversations. I'm your host, Munzer Zafar. I serve as the Director of Graduate Studies Curation Program here at Habib University. Today, we are going to explore the spirit of entrepreneurial uh, leadership and its ability to navigate challenges. With the privilege of hosting a very special guest, uh, Mr. Mudassar Shekha. Mudassar Shekha is a truly a visionary with a very noble mission. The mission of simplifying the lives of countless individuals. In his capacity as the co-founder and CEO of Kareem, he has cemented himself as not only a leader uh, in the tech industry, but he has also emerged as a compassionate advocate for meaningful change. His de firm dedication in trying to improve the quality of life through innovative solutions has really put him at the forefront of entrepreneurship and social impact. Assalamu alaikum, Dasar. Wa alaikum salam, sir. Welcome to Habib Talks. Thank you for having me. So this is your first visit to Habib University. It uh, is. Yeah. So what, are, what are your first impressions of Habib? Yeah, pehle to ye ke, uh, I, I was just telling uh, Kawasir that Habib University has just snuck up on us. You know, we grew uh -huh. up in Karachi. Yeah. And somehow we didn't realize that this amazing university, this campus, yeah. uh, exists in our city. Every time we go to the airport, it's right around the corner. Right. So, uh, first, I'm a little bit surprised uh -huh. that I didn't know uh, yeah. much. It was very refreshing to hear about the vision of Habib. Yeah. 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 And I think that's the that's the sort of most striking thing that I heard all day and I yeah. noticed all day. The ambition right. is to build one of the best universities, undergraduate programs in the world. In the world. And the ambition is there in a very difficult and constrained environment. Exactly. So That's the true. leadership is not letting the environment and the constraints yeah. shortchange their, their vision. Exactly. And so there's a, lot a of belief that yeah. we'll get there. One thing that's very special about Habib University is model of liberal arts education, mm -hmm. uh, which is basically the vision is to give our, even our engineers a very broad and very you know well-rounded uh, exposure but coming from an employer I think it would be very nice for you to shed some light on the importance of that you know that well-rounded exposure if you really go down to what an engineer is supposed to do you start appreciating some of the humanities element a lot more because what is an engineer going to do the engineer is solving a problem mm. that exists in the real world faced by some people and if you don't understand that context well enough, if mm -hmm. you don't understand the lives of people well enough, mm -hmm. you're not going to be able to design the best solutions, are you? Right. So I think having that background uh, coupled with technical skills mm -hmm. really gives you the ability to appreciate mm -hmm. and, and craft way better solutions mm -hmm. than someone who's just going to apply technical abilities right. without the understanding of the world right. in which they operate. Yeah. And especially now with the whole uh, the rise of artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. You know, computers are going to create mm. code, right? Like they'll, they'll write the code. Yeah. A lot of the technical stuff is already is done is by the. It's already <laughs> done, right? Yeah. And where humans will have to sort of shine and add mm. value mm. will be on the customer empathy side, will mm. be on understanding of these soft skills that computers may not be able to appreciate mm. just yet. Yeah. So I actually feel that in the world that we're entering now, mm. that combination of humanities and liberal arts mm. with the technical skills. Mm. becomes even more valuable than maybe it was 10, 20 years ago. Yeah. Looking at your journey and you were working both economics related jobs and tech related jobs. Was it deliberate? Was it These things are rarely deliberate, right? right uh, yeah, I think yeah. oh, Steve Jobs ki Stanford made commencement speech. Thi na. Uh -huh. You can connect the dots looking backwards. Yeah. It's very hard to connect the dots looking forward. Uh -huh. But basically what happened, at least in my case, was I studied economics and computer science both in college. Right. I graduated at the height of the dot com bubble. Right. Right. Like there was very little value uh -huh. of an economics degree per se. Yeah. I Tech see. skills, computer science skills, coding skills were all the rage. Right. So I went down that path uh -huh. and and worked in companies where I was doing programming, software engineering. Um, and then, you know, the the thing that sort of was there and, and, and uh -huh. is there today to some extent as well is uh -huh. the quest to learn, right? You have to uh -huh. keep learning and, uh -huh. and the more you learn earlier in life, mm. 
the more successful you will become later. Absolutely. And there's a concept that I heard recently is that learning compounds. So if you mm. learn something at the age of 22, mm. that learning will lead to something, some learning, which will lead to some learning. By the age of 40, that learning mm. has created so many offshoots mm. that are incredibly valuable. Mm. So in my case, I was fortunate for some reason or the other that there was a desire to learn new things. So right. I did an internship at a VC firm, uh -huh. saw how the investment world works, right. was lucky to get an opportunity to work at McKinsey, saw how consulting works. Yeah. But I kept coming back to my sort of technical, technical roots in yeah. some shape or form uh, because I felt that that was more exciting and you could yeah. make more direct impact in the lives of people more so than doing supporting things as a consultant or as a financier. I want to understand from you your process of uh, how you approach solving problems. At Habib, we are, uh, you know, we lay a lot of emphasis on design thinking to come up with a truly uh, proper solution which not only satisfies user needs, it's feasible and financially viable. I don't think it's easy to nail down, you know, and a lot of times you're making, you're, you're having to call the shots about whether, to, whether should I should take this risk, whether this project is uh, going to be worth my time, my energy and the money that will go into it. I would really like to understand from you your process. One, what made you bet on urban transportation when you were uh, thinking of Kareem? Uh, and then two, as you expand Kareem, what is your process in, okay, this idea, I think I can bet on it. Let me unpack this in a, in a, in a couple of different ways. Uh, uh, I think there is a fundamental belief at Kareem that anything is possible. Mm. And you know we've been inspired by a lot of people that have gone before us. Mm. Uh, Elon Musk said, "If it's not constrained by the laws of gravity, <laughs> then the solution is there. You just have to find a solution." Okay. Right? You know, insan chand pe pahunch gaya, which I'm sure 200 years ago yeah. looked impossible, mm. but humans figured it out, right? Right. So, I think the first element of culture that uh, exists at Kareem mm. is that anything is possible mm. if we put our minds to it if we focus on it enough mm. and we give it everything to figure this out and then i've noticed alhamdulillah things generally figure themselves out right if the ambition is is there then yeah. somehow enabling blocks come into place so for example yeah. let's say we saying ke yaar maine jo na number one undergraduate program in mm. the world mm. in karachi that looks impossible it's like mm. going to the moon and coming back right, right? But if there is that ambition and vision to become that, mm. most likely what's going to happen is you will start attracting other people that will mm. be inspired by that vision. Try the vision. Right? So, better be in the world. But if you want to do something small, it's not worth their while to come and join the ship. Mm. But if you want to become the world's best undergraduate program globally, mm. I'm sure many of them will say, I want to join this ship, right? Mm. I want to be on this rocket ship. Mm -hmm. Second thing that happens is you start getting rid of a lot of noise mm. because bahut chode, chode, chode idea, incremental ideas they end up distracting you mm. but if the vision is to get somewhere big mm. then, then this becomes noise and then mm. you start getting less distracted by the small mm. manusha mm. that generally can hinder you and distract you mm. if the vision is not there mm. so i think pehli cheez to ye hai ke you have to believe that anything is possible mm. and if you believe anything is possible mm. there's a good chance you'll figure it out but I if you see. don't believe that mm. then there is no chance in earth that you'll figure this out i think the vision is good and it's important but the way that you get to the vision is by starting small mm. you cannot say ke yaar maine product banana hai for a billion people today mm. because there is no way to figure out how can you build a product for a billion people right mm. you have to build something for the smallest segment of customers uh, possible. Mm. And then you have to get it right, get it perfect. And then you say, Achha, ab ye ban gaya ke liye. how do I get to the next adjacent segment, mm. the next adjacent segment, the next. Mm. So at Kareem, we got super lucky in the beginning because we decided to go after transportation. Mm. And since we were consultants and we had faced the problem of transportation in the region, was full of friction, right? Mm. Time pegadi ani milti thi, gadi mm. milti thi, cash ni hota tha, mm. locations ke masle hote the. We had experienced all facets of the problem. Mm -hmm. So what we built in the beginning was a product that served the needs of consultants that were going around the region, mm. and that's all we did for the first year of Kareem. 
Kareem was not an app. Kareem was not an on-demand service. Kareem mm. was a transportation service for professional services mm. organizations. Mm. And that gave us the ability to focus a lot, right? Mm. We were able to get that thing right mm. and solve a lot of things that come in the way, right? That's mm. a locations ke masle aare, customer service ke masle aare, reliability ke masle aare. These organizations have some of the highest standards of reliability. Mm. And we were forced to solve these things at the highest levels of mm. reliability. Mm. Once we did that, then we were like, okay, now ye platform ban gaya, now how do we go to the next? So who are the consumers that look closest mm. to these people mm. that we are serving? Mm. Generally higher end consumers who wanted to go to the airport, come back from the airport. Mm. We started going after that use case, understood, mm. iterated, got that use case right. Mm. And then we said, okay, what's the next thing now? Mm. Right? We were in Saudi, op operating in Saudi at that time. Mm. Uswag, women were not able to drive in Saudi. Mm. It's a huge segment, big problem. Mm. How do you now take this service and solve the issues that women are facing mm -hmm. with transport in Saudi. And mm -hmm. there are new challenges right? Mm -hmm. Women don't necessarily want their phone numbers to be shared by strange men. Mm -hmm. how, how do we anonymize the phone number so mm -hmm. that their number doesn't get shared? Mm -hmm. How do we train captains to not look at women in the rear view mirror? Mm -hmm. X, Y, Z, ABC, mm -hmm. right? And then you go to the next thing. Mm -hmm. So big things are built in, in waves, right? Mm -hmm. Through iterations. Yeah. Uh, and every time we have done it this way, we mm. have succeeded. Every mm. time we have forgotten this way, mm. we have failed. And I then see. we have realized that we need to go back to starting small right. and building incrementally on top. Right. So a couple of points come to my mind. One is fresh graduate is naivita. Barkon yeah. thinks that truly not be possible given given the constraints. Isn't that something that they should worry about? Or you th you're saying just you know just shoot for it? Naivety is good, uh -huh. but it has to be mar married with effort and yeah, aksar log kehte hain ke entrepreneurs ke bare mein kehte hain ke if they knew how difficult it is to build these things hmm. they would have never started in the first place right yeah. so the fact that they were naive got them to believe that this can be done they jumped in and they're like oh no ye to bahut mushkil hai right yeah. itni sacrifice karni pad rahi hai yeah. but now you're in it so it's not easy to pull yourself out yeah. so so naivety is actually very very good yeah. but <laughs> naivety without effort Hmm. without the willingness to work hard, without the perseverance that I'm not going to give up, hmm. is a disaster. Right. But naivety and dreaming with hard work, with hmm. effort, hmm. with belief, with conviction, hmm. is how big things have been done, right? Hmm. Someone believed that it can be done, hmm. it hmm. sounded naive, but then hmm. they figured it out. Right, right. Habib University, inshallah, will become the number one right. uh, undergraduate program in the yeah. world. Yeah. It yeah. sounds naive. Yeah. But yeah. if you don't believe in it, uh -huh. then we're not going to figure this out, right? Yeah. It's okay, yeah. it's good to be naive. Mm -hmm. But you have to work hard. Right, right. And hard work. Karni hai. Yeah. Baghair, you're a dreamer, right? Mm -hmm. and, so, and so the other question that comes to my mind is when you say you start small, your vision is very, very broad. How do you pick the right next action? The short answer is I don't know. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And there's probably some science to it that I'm sure is taught in, mm -hmm. uh, in, in schools. Yeah. Um, but you have to realize that if you have a bold vision, hmm. then you'll have to take risks to hmm. get there. Right. And when right. you take risks, there risk may failures be failures. Hmm. And you have to be comfortable with failing. Hmm. And what you have to make sure is that every failure is a learning opportunity. Sometimes hmm. you will, to your question, hmm. stretch a little bit more than hmm. you should have. Right. The results will tell you that you did. Yeah. Then peach yeah. has Sometimes you'll miss the mark a little bit. Then you. Yeah. So you have to learn yeah. and iterate. And you have to be comfortable with failure. Yeah. And if you're not failing enough, yeah. then you're not taking enough risk. Right. And if you're not taking enough risk, then you're not going to get there, right? Tells us that entrepreneurship is all about that, right? You, you should be comfortable with success, failure. There may be multiple failures, but this is the life of an entrepreneur that they're not afraid of taking risks. Yeah. And this yeah. is the prerequisite to do, doing anything big in life, right? Mm -hmm. Any mm -hmm. risk risk liye bagar to, I think. Yeah. You'll stay in your comfort zone and nothing big will yeah. happen uh, yeah. as a result of it. I think one of the major mental blocks or young entrepreneurs is when they look at the political instability in around them right now, especially post-COVID and post-political instability in Pakistan. And there is a sense that the, the state has a lot of dysfunction. And so if they embark on something, you know, their own families are going to tell, why are you, you know, this is not going to work. Because you know you are going to be stopped every step to, uh, step of the way. And I think your success, Kareem's success, was very fascinated by how you guys dealt with the government. 
uh, you were very proactive with you know uh, drafting legislation for them i would like you to uh, you know give that inspiration to a young entrepreneur and what should be his mindset when he when he tries to think about you know succeeding in this environment what message would you give to yeah. that young one bahut sare masle solve karne hmm. understand the problem solve the problem hmm. understand the next problem solve the next problem hmm. and if you just focus on that and do that hmm. there are enough problems to solve hmm. and enough businesses to be created in pakistan hmm. uh, for most businesses macro is irrelevant largely i see ek do jagahon pe wo matter karta hai for example the business that we were doing at hmm. some point we have to be regulated to wahan ja ke thoda solve karna pada for some startups they say ke yaar funding nahi mil rahi because of pakistan ke halat ki wajah se and if you don't get funding how do you build the business and i tell them ke yaar do you think your father your grandfather build these businesses mm. with venture funding mm. they did not they, they build these businesses many of these businesses have become very very large mm. right mm. so it can definitely be done without mm. that kind of funding as well mm-hmm. there is an environment where big businesses can be built mm. the answer is different mm. for pakistan than it is for the rest of the world because of mm. our circumstances i think we just need to focus on the problems mm. we need to solve those problems we have to create value for people mm. they'll pay uh through revenue mm. for the problems that you're solving for them mm. uh we have to build businesses in a more efficient mm. you know f- cash flow positive as early as possible environment mm. which has been done before which can be done mm. and uh, we should maybe count our blessings that because of the halat the mm. foreign competition mm. is much weaker in mm. pakistan when we did a business in dubai mm. you know uber which is now the parent company of kareem they came to the market a year after we started mm. and it was very very difficult to compete with them right hum aapas jeb mein 5 lakh dollar the unke jeb mein 500 million dollar the they had 100 engineers we had 5 engineers mm. so there is a silver lining of the macro yeah. which keeps competition away mm. and the teams on the ground mm. that are working mm. make it makes it much easier for them to succeed just a little, little bit more on that cynic may argue that pakistan is an not an industrialized economy with industrialization comes uh, an ecosystem which supports a lot of very ambitious technical uh, ventures without that ecosystem you are limited to s- certain kinds of business so to a cynic what would you say i think the problem is in the mindset right more than the the enabling things that are required mujhe aap pata hai jab shuru shuru mein pakistan aaye the na to hame sab ne kaha ke yaar karachi jaise shehar mein where security is such a big concern for people you really think that someone is going to get in a car with a stranger right. to go from point a to point b yeah. Yeah. it seemed challenging right yeah. अभी भी लोग कभी कभी लोग सवाल पूछते हैं हाउ इज इट हैपनिंग यू नो देर इज अ कंपनी कॉल्ड टी एस एम सी इन ताइवान राइट दे मैनुफैक्चर द मेजोरिटी ऑफ वर्ल्ड सेमी कंडक्टर इन वन सिटी राइट यानी वो दे वर नॉट बोर्न विद दैट इको सिस्टम राइट समन सेट कि यार मैंने बनानी है वो गया है उसने बनाई है अब इको सिस्टम बन गया है where many other companies are are, are thriving mm-hmm. so really munzer i think it goes back to the same point that i've been making i think mm-hmm. we have to think big mm-hmm. we have to think unconstrained mm-hmm. and if we think big mm-hmm. and we believe through mm-hmm. naivety mm-hmm. that we can get there mm-hmm. we will in most cases figure it out in mm-hmm. some cases there will be failures that's mm-hmm. part of any entrepreneurial venture mm-hmm. but we have to aim big mm-hmm. we have to shoot for the moon mm-hmm. and if we keep doing that time and time again mm-hmm. these things will happen and mm. no one is born with an ecosystem no one is born with industrialization no mm. one is born with any of these things right mm. they were done by someone mm. Mm. and then they happen right right absolutely that's that's very powerful there are uh, other startups that couldn't survive so post covid there's uh, we have an example of uh, airlift wrapping up there is uh, and inflation fuel costs and i, I think especially the rising interest rates they have hammered very harshly uh, on the on various startups so and i i've heard that kareem also had to size down a little bit in order to deal with this environment and this environment is still like it's not done yet like so post covid recession i think it's not over yet uh so i i want your thoughts on th- so your experience through this uh how, like what kind of mindset would you carry when you when you were dealing with this and how nervous does it make you at the moment uh the the current situation in pakistan 
especially I think the rise of fuel prices would really affect your business as well. If you are doing a business, if uh -huh. you are doing entrepreneurship, uh, there are challenges that come every day, every week. Kabi funding ni mil rahi, kabi competition aara hai, kabi fuel price bada rahi hai, kabi regulator aapki gaadiyan band kar raha hai. So you have to just build some thick skin and you have to take it as you go. Aaj ye masla hai, let's think what the solution is, solve it, then go to the next problem, then go to the next problem, go to the next problem. So as you mentioned in COVID, we got massively hit because shares band ho gaye the. Uh, our business was down by 90% mm -hmm. uh, and at that time surprisingly not surprisingly deliveries were taking off because people were stuck at home yeah. they required things to be delivered so we quickly pivoted Pivot. from ride hailing to deliveries mm -hmm. and today if you go to Dubai we have a very large delivery business mm -hmm. uh, actually much larger than ride hailing in that city mm -hmm. uh, where we started the business mm -hmm. uh, we did a we have a payments business on the back of mm -hmm. all the payment flows that were going through the Kareem mm -hmm. app for from customers, payment to captains. Mm -hmm. So most things have a solution mm -hmm. uh, and you have to believe that these things can be solved mm -hmm. and start solving things one by one. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned airlift. Yeah. It goes back to the same thing that we discussed, right? Mm -hmm. Failures to honge. Mm -hmm. If you dream big, yeah. there will be failures, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not very, very close to the airlift story and I don't yeah. know too much about it but you have to give it to them hmm. for being super super ambitious right yeah they were yeah. basically saying that pakistan mein nahi karenge pakistan se bahar bhi karenge right. now you can call it naivety you can yeah. call it foolishness <laughs> or you can call it ambition yeah but they shot for the moon right yeah. Yeah. and you need to make some attempts like that right. for something to get through yeah. and then global businesses will come out of pakistan yeah. so i don't want i i personally would never uh sort of hold anyone back uh -huh. from ambition. Right. But ambition in doses, right? Mm. And in, in, the execution has to be mm. step by step, mm. but the ambition has to be mm. as high as possible. So Mudassar, we talked a lot about all the, you know, various challenges and various um, issues that students can face when getting out. So what advice would you give to our young students? Yeah, look, I think uh, in the context of Pakistan today, I think three things uh, come to mind. One is shoot for the moon. Right, you have unlimited potential, and your achievements are going to be dictated by how high you shoot. Mm -hmm. uh, and don't shortchange that potential, please. So mm -hmm. I think just shoot for the moon. Think as big as you can. Number two, mm -hmm. you have to work really hard. You have to focus on one or two problems, and make them your life's mission. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to work hard. Work hard. And the third, especially in the context of Habib uh, and the kind of education that you that you're trying to instill in these in these students uh, be a learner mm. uh, make sure that especially in the first decade or two of your professional life make sure that you focus on learning you don't do things for for glory for fame for a slightly better salary but do things for learning and mm. this is the tradition that Habib is trying to put in place mm. with the humanities core mm. at the, the foundation of everything that is being taught right? the whole mm. idea of that is to expose you to disciplines that are outside of your core competence mm. and uh, we want to just make just make sure that you stay on that journey of learning mm. and make that your core mission for the mm. next decade or two mm. thank you Mudassar for a brilliant conversation your inputs were great I think you are going to be an inspiration for a lot of our young students so that's all folks uh, I hope you enjoy today's episode of Habib Talks